So Nancy and Tim here, we're going to talk to you today about new music and how you go about approaching a brand new piece. So the duo's commissioned about 65 new pieces over the last 20 years and so we've been in the trenches with playing new music and we're going to share some of our insights about the process of learning and performing and commissioning new works. So why should we be going to all this trouble of commissioning and performing new music? Sometimes it's very experimental music, challenging music. And the answer is very simple, is because you want to keep your genre alive. So if you're a string quartet, you want to be commissioning string quartets. So a hundred years down the road, other string quartets have string quartets to perform. And so for us as a piano duo, we want to be contributing piano duo repertoire to the world. And we also want to promote Canadian culture, Canadian composers, yeah. and... We want to support living composers. We want to support living composers. One of the tricky things about having a brand new piece is that there's no recording out there to uh, get ideas from. Of course, you have the score. Very happily, you have the composer still alive. You can phone them up or her up and ask, what the heck did you mean by this? Or do you realize this is completely unplayable right here? Or what were you thinking when you had that bowing last for five measures at 60 equals a quarter? Plus, there's tons you get out of learning a brand new piece of music. First of all, it can often be technique expanding, meaning that you can be asked to do things you've never been asked to do on the violin, play like that or like that or like that. And at first you're like, this is not possible. I'm going to have tendonitis in one minute. But soon you realize there's actually a way to do it if I put my thumb there or my whatever. And uh, these are things you would nor not normally discover unless you had this, this piece thrown at you. And then it makes playing your traditional rep all that much more easy. So I'll tell you a story about Schoenberg. He wrote the fantasy, a great piece for violin and piano. And when you first learn it, you're looking at the score and there's all kinds of really crazy harmonics you never knew existed on the violin. Apparently he had a violin with notches cut in the fingerboard so that he could figure out every possible harmonic that existed on the instrument. And he would refer to that. So he wasn't a violinist himself, but he knew exactly what was possible. That reminds me of, of something very interesting. What? Jan Kanin, because didn't he do the same thing? Yes, he yes. did. And Kanin wrote us a fantastic piece inspired by the music of Schubert called Incarnation. Mm -hmm. But he had me whistle. Ah. I had to whistle, and that was a big challenge, playing and whistling at the same time. Particularly because you play and you're not whistling, and then your mouth gets dry. And then all of a sudden, 20 minutes into the piece, because this was a long piece, then all of a sudden you have to whistle. And I remember afterwards sitting in the green room and there was a knock on the door and this man came in from China and he said, I loved your piece. And he said, I know the challenges that you're facing having to play and whistle and I can help you because I'm a professional whistler. And he gave me a whistling lesson. This is true. This is very true and it was a huge help. And I can tell you the secret for all of you pianists who are playing and have to whistle is you don't start whistling right away. You actually hum the note first, and then you begin to whistle. You know, we think about big works like the Kreutzer Sonata or the Tchaikovsky Concerto. And I don't think of the Tchaikovsky Okay, you don't concerto. think of that. Well, but... I think of the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto. Okay, sonata. well, the Tchaikovsky... I'm I mean... certainly not thinking of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Okay, well, that. we all are, Mendelssohn. except for you. I like the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. Okay. That's a beautiful... No whistling, unfortunately, but it does have its nice moments. Anyway, we're thinking about the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto and the Beethoven Kreutzer Sonata. And these were pieces that were thought to be unplayable in their time. And this is something we have to kind of remember when we're approaching new music also, that it may seem impossible, some things that's thrown your way, but it's all good. It makes you a stronger person. So sometimes I find even the word new in new music is a bit off-putting. If you think of traditional repertoire, the new music, you lose kind of the bridge in between. And your, your traditional repertoire can really help you learn new music. I think it's fine to say, well, this piece sounds like Brahms, or this piece reminds me of Ravel, and then use those things you've learned in the traditional repertoire to play your new repertoire. I remember a, this, a very fine Canadian composer, and he wrote us a very, very difficult piece that I found quite challenging, and I asked him how to play the beginning, and he just said to me, play it like Chopin. And that was just a revelation, and that was exactly what 
was needed. So you start out by learning all your notes and doing what's in the score. Um, but then, yeah, you have to make it mean something. And the fact that you can phone the composer and ask him or her, what is this actually about, is a huge, huge advantage. Another advantage of playing a lot of new music is it can differentiate you from other people who only are playing Beethoven and whatever. Um, it can add to your profile. It can give you opportunities as performers you wouldn't normally get. That's true. Another really cool thing when you're learning a piece that's brand new, you can collaborate with the composer, there can be dialogue, there can sometimes even be changes made in the score that make the piece even better or more playable. I used to be really afraid to ask a composer to change anything because it is the composer after all. But one time we went off to play for Murray Schaefer at his house, he'd written us a really great piece, and there was a section in there that was really awkward, and we played it for him, and I, I thought that part actually went well, but he did notice that it, it didn't seem easy and it didn't seem natural. Come on, let's just change that. And, you know, within two minutes he changed it. And so the message to me was not only that, you know, it's okay to change things, but that he wasn't so attached to those notes that he couldn't easily change it into something that was at least as good. So, of course, with the whistling, though, I just kept working at it, trying to get better. And I just gave up and made a change. Yeah, just gonna go. And then you gotta practice wiggling your fingers in there. See, it's really simple. Okay? Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below and click subscribe. And if you'd like more information about the Takamore Festival, please visit takamorefestival.ca. Thank you. Bye bye.